What's poppin' everybody? Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be in every episode. Mm, the chief executive host, some would say. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I think chief executive guest <laughs> Chief is... executive. What? <laughs> yes. What kind of... That, those titles are like oxymoronic, I the, think. The keg, as it were. The keg. <laughs> That's the worst. That's an uncomfortable way to spell keg. It C E G. It, it is. makes me want to like like throw up in my mouth a little. <laughs> like, oh. like it looks like seg. Ugh. Yeah, it's that's a, it, that's a really uncomfortable spelling. It's rancid. It's rancid. It's, to it say is least. rancid. Yes. Wow. Or rancid is how I can spell it. <laughs> With a K. With a K. Yeah. yeah rancid. <laughs> that uh, is terrible. Absolutely terrible. Jay, let me, let me just hop into today's episode right off with a corny joke. How about it? Dude, the bingo cards are lighting up like bananas right now. Just like bananas. Yeah. Some some folk being like, man, I've got the forgets the corny joke, and now I know I'm not getting that not line. Not getting that one. Nope. Okay. So once again, uh, this is. This is more of like a line that I thought was just absolutely hilarious. It was sent to us uh, by Paris Jauhan. Okay. And so I was I was like, oh, this is this is good. This is good. It goes like this. Ready? My friend entered 10 pun. Let me try again. Let me okay. Try again. Yeah. From the top. I, I need it to be perfect. Okay. But but I'm, I'm okay with including my mistake in the final cut, you know? Yeah. Because it, it shows my humanity. People are like, this guy's always doing so good all the time. Yeah. That like I need to know. It turns that out he's not perfect. I need to know that he's mortal. That's right. <laughs> this is okay. This is a thing about all superheroes. What I'm going to do is walk away from the corny joke very quietly. <laughs> oh no! It's like oh no. people are saved. Like, can I? Do I need to erase this card? We'll see if we remember or not. Go ahead, man. What do all superheroes do? Okay, tell me about this though. Like immortality as a goal is is it seems like constantly like an objective for mm -hmm. like the the villains and stuff it's right. like i want to live forever right and this is like I, why 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 like, indeed do, doesn't it just seem like too long like forever like if you are the here's the thing is that if you if you if what you're trying to seek is immortality like in a way where you your physical body cannot die ever whether by injury or age yep and if you are just impervious to death you really haven't thought it through right because whilst it seems great that you're going to live forever and not die and can just wipe that off your worry list like great news not gonna die right the problem is you're not thinking about forever appropriately because here's the thing about forever is that it never ends. It ne right? just never it and just ever. never, ever, and never ends. And what you have to know about forever never ending is that in the, in the grand scope of forever, Earth's time in the universe is slight. Yes. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I do. I do. <laughs> like I understand. You, yep. you will sure enough be there until the end of the Earth. Right. And then you will continue to be there and continue to like everyone you have ever known will not will die. No, <laughs> it will no. just be you. A reality it, check. People. Reality <laughs> check, people. Not only is it going to be you, but eventually like the sun's going to bad I, news. You're going to be cold <laughs> and unable to die. My, my, I, I like I like the idea that who we're talking to right now is like we're at like a con <laughs> for villains and it's like immortality or not. Today we discuss. Today we discuss. And they'll be like, no, 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 no. I figured it out and be like, you haven't. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's you like, haven't thought it's, about it. It's moderated by Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I yeah. love this. Yeah. There you go. So that, yeah, I agree with you though. Forever is forever and then, then some. Right. It's more, it's longer than you think. This is, this is one of those things like where, um, I, I think probably one of the most common questions that we, that we get, uh, beyond will you make Percy Jackson, fan theories has got to oh, be yeah. which is probably the number one all most the time yes um is do you have any advice for like uh becoming a youtuber mm -hmm. and you and i talk about this a lot where there's sort of that idea of like give yourself some parameters where it's like okay 
Like I'm, I'm going to start making videos like, you know, every Wednesday for 10 weeks or something because there sort of is this, this exact same idea applied to the yeah. process of this where it's like when we first started doing the, the, the brotherhood 2.0 challenge kind of inspired by the vlog brothers, you know, we were signing up for 260 videos for that first year. Yeah. So it was five days a week. Right. It was so many. So like even going into it, you could have been like, I have like 20 ideas. Like I have tons of stuff to talk about. And then, you know, you're like four weeks in and you're like, that was all of them. That was all. That was, I t- that was that 20. Was, that was all I, of I, the ideas I had. I thought I would have thought of more by now, but I didn't. Right. right what right. was I doing? 20 barely puts a dent in it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we, we constantly, this is like the, the piece of advice that we always give people is like, give yourself a schedule. So you're, you're kind of like committing to the idea. Like, okay, I'm right. gonna do this. And then, and then there's like that timeline of like, I'm going to every every Wednesday for 10 weeks. And then at the end of those 10 weeks, I'm just going to be like, okay, I'm in it. I'm going to keep going. This right. isn't, this then, isn't like crushing. Yeah. Or, then, then you reevaluate. Yes. Yeah. And you can, you can go from there, but you're right. I think having just as a, just as a getting off the ground point, having an end goal in mind for your YouTube channel or like for a, a starting goal yes is so helpful because otherwise exactly what we just talked about is going to happen to you and you're going to be like i'm going to upload every friday or every wednesday or whatever and you are quickly going to realize that you didn't account for all of the fridays yes like do you know how many fridays there are ben infinite all of them all of them all of the fridays yes they just keep going they just, they just you, ca- yeah keep coming they back keep around coming. the bend and weeks feel a lot shorter all of a sudden you're like oh my god it's already friday again it's like I, the, when I started, I shot the video on Monday and I had all the way to Friday. But then what I didn't realize was I always, I was only going to have Saturday and Sunday to think of the new thing before I shot on Monday. And then I didn't have that. So as I was like, oh, I should shoot on Tuesday. And then, but I still don't think of something. So I'm sure on Wednesday, now I got to shoot something. And then I got, oh my gosh, you're I'm me behind. Like, you're giving me like flashbacks yeah. now. It's like, I'm like, I'm like getting like a clammy sweat. Uh, it's, it's reminding me so much of the idea of the just noticeable <coughs> difference, uh, uh, which is like, did you I, coin? that phrase i to be honest with you i'm not actually entirely sure this is like this is one of those things i think that i have very naively claimed before that like i can go back to the memory of the date every time i've learned anything in my entire life where it's like how do you know about that and like let me tell you the day because i remember learning i remember this happening the just noticeable just noticeable difference is not one of those things i don't remember learning okay because when yeah i remember you making the video about the just noticeable difference and i remember like that is such a great phrase for exactly what it is I'm so glad you taught me this, but then I think one day you told me like I just made that up. I was like, N- that is even better. I, so well, I, I don't remember. For, well, may, so we don't know at the moment. I'm gonna give you credit, but I'll let you describe what the just noticeable difference is to people. Let me let me also just bring this up too, because one of the things that I have found to be very very fulfilling about doing this particular podcast is that year one doing Super Carlin Brothers, I had all of these video topics that I like really. They were, I think, intended or would be better applied as conversations. And so what I'm finding is that just about any topic that I feel like I discussed in year one of Super Carlin Brothers could be a very good topic for us to discuss on here. Ooh, on, and, the, on the pop. On the pop. And we've done that with a lot of them. So like, okay. I've almost wondered if I should just start like going through each of my each of my videos and then just like planting it as a show note and being like, oh, by the way, I made a video about this too. Oh, yeah. What do you <laughs> well, know? Link in the card. <laughs> link in the card. Do not go watch it. It is embarrassing. But Don't... like, I mean, maybe go. Actually, <laughs> on that note, this past weekend on my Instagram, I don't, I know you're not on the grams right now. So so maybe you didn't see. I did. I did see it. I actually. I know exactly okay. what you're saying. But go. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had. Uh, I had Facebook feed me a. This happened on this day eight years ago. Yes. By which it typically means this happened almost on this day eight years ago because unless you're a everyday Facebook user. Facebook doesn't have a memory to give you every single day. Sure. But Facebook is determined to anyway. So oh, it yes. will. Ju- it will just source like okay. Since this person's been using Facebook, have they ever posted anything on this day in the past? No. What's the best performing thing near this date in the past? Show them that. Show them that. So that's what happened. And it, uh, it's a, it, it's frustrating to me how successful Facebook is. Oh, no. At, oh, no. At like, I'm being like, oh, good one. Uh, what, a, what, a, what a great one. But it was a picture of you and me um, in the, the very early days of Super Carlin Brothers from eight years ago. Yes. 
Yeah. And uh, we were holding up one of the very first pieces of like a uh, viewer mail we ever got to the P.O. box. Yep. And it was this um, like, like duct tape, duct tape base. painting art thing. It was from the the old SCB logo, the original logo. Which was like, kind of like an 8-bit inspired. Yeah, it was 8-bit yeah. inspired. Uh, poorly <laughs> done. I, I literally, the way I did it was I took pictures of us and then I laid graph paper over it and then just like like traced it on graph paper that's how you did that's that? how i did it and then i scanned that into photoshop and filled it in with stuff and um that's how i did it i had absolutely no idea that's why it looks hand drawn and crummy uh because it was <laughs> what, what i remember about doing that and preparing for it was that you and i were like we were trying to get a picture of my face to be like the other half of yeah. it and it was like at a point in time i didn't have like a beard i don't wear glasses and so there was like i was just like a guy you know, yeah, it was like there was guy. There was like absolutely no defining characteristic. Mm-hmm. And then of course your half was gonna have like your glasses and yeah. like you kinda like the hair and stuff going on too. So it was like we it was like, should we just put like I didn't wear like sunglasses in any videos, but in that early graphic, I'm wearing sunglasses. You're wearing sunglasses. Yeah. yeah. It's like or or an eye patch, depending. Or, <laughs> I prefer that. Maybe you were a pirate. New head cannon, a pirate seeking treasure. See, exactly. On we're the gonna, high seas. We're gonna circle back because we've tangented off the main point like four times, four getting times. deeper into the story. <clears throat> okay, okay. So okay. we're this Peel was back that was the old logo. That's how we made the old logo. And this is a picture on my Facebook, and it's me and you holding up our respective halves, standing outside of a seven of a seven eleven. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> and it was amazing to me how all of the comments were basically the same, which were, "How does Jay look the exact same, and Ben looks so much younger?" <laughs> it was. Uh, you're right. It, yeah. It, it, it was like even like looking at him, like that doesn't even look like me. Yeah, you. Like, lo- I mean, you were you were like baby face bed for sure. I was. I yeah. was. I don't know what. It, uh, yeah, it, it was like a very particular period of time. I think uh, between like graduating college, or like maybe like my last year of college, and like maybe the first like couple years out of college, where like I wasn't really doing like any physical activity, and I think that it just like. I don't even know how else to describe it other than like I can just I can tell like by looking at it like yeah. I feel like there's just something else is like missing I don't know but yeah I, I definitely have like a total baby face and it was like further affirmation that like I can't shave my beard because like, I'm like, <laughs> like this I'm is like, what's underneath it's like ooh. I don't, I don't need to go back to that. I don't need to go back to that. So I'm just going to keep it forever and ever and ever. And it'll be fine. <laughs> it'll be fine. Yeah. I also could not believe how the exact same I looked. Me neither. I was like, oh. You like, apparently like eight years ago, you nailed your hairstyle and you've just locked in. Apparently. Yeah. Apparently. I can't tell if I looked old then or if I look young now. I think you look young now. Okay, good. Great answer. Most <laughs> people think that I am older than you, which I think for a really long period of time, I was always, I, there was always like this kind of like, being the younger brother like glow of pride that came out of me like when people were like i think ben's older and i'd be like thanks it was okay it's so funny you bring that up because when people would say they thought you looked i I would have the exact same effect on me oh no because, okay. like you're like oh look i look older but it would be like in my mind i'm like yeah exactly you look older but at the end of the day, I still am. <laughs> I still like, got that on you. I st- I'm still older than you, <laughs> and I look younger than you. <laughs> so you're really so you're winning, in, winning both, in both just, directions. Just rub it in, why don't you, <laughs> chief executive guest? <laughs> But apparently, this also brought some pride to you. Yes, it did. It did. Yeah. yeah, there, there were like, there were like those little moments where it was like, oh man. I, I think especially just because, uh, like, going through high school, I've talked about this before, but like a lot of people refer to you as Carlin, which meant yeah. that like when I rolled rolled up, which was we were we were only a couple of years apart, like in in school terms, and that meant that I was like always little Carlin, and it was like, I do not like that. <laughs> What's up, little C? <clears throat> that is not what I was going for here. So anyway. <clears throat> dream smothered so we'll, we'll peel back though so just noticeable difference right okay, is wait. that where, or do we need to go back to a layer before that i don't know we talked about treasure hunting pirates pirates okay we'll come back to that just noticeable difference just noticeable what di- is the just noticeable difference okay so the just noticeable difference the the best explanation that i originally had for it uh was the idea of like a candy company specifically like with with bags of like M&Ms where as time has gone on, you might like open up a like a bag, a standard bag of M&Ms and be like, man, there are not as many in here as there used to be. And 
the idea was that like as the M&M company was like progressing further and further as like a way to increase margins, the idea was like, okay, so like maybe on average, each bag has, you know, 40 M&Ms in it. And oh, the idea that sounds so high. Does it? I don't know. Okay. Let's play guess. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with 40. I'm still okay, going on a brown bag. I'm, no, I was thinking like a yellow. I, for some reason, I was imagining peanut M and M's because they are the because they're the superior best M and M of them all. I think that there are forty M and M's inside of a standard yellow bag. I think it's closer to like twenty. Twenty. Wow. Yeah. So so few. So few. Okay. Well, we'll we will we will get a bag and count. Okay. And see. So we'll we'll circle back to that. If you guys also have guesses, just let us know. You know anywhere that you feel like uh and we'll confirm how close we all were eventually it'll be great so the idea was though that like if originally there were 40 pieces in the bag that that probably had an associated weight or you know whatever and that as time went on you could be like okay let's instead of 40 pieces let's aim to have 39 pieces and maybe 38 pieces and if you're thinking about it like in terms of mass manufacturing where there are like millions of bags being made right then you know every 40 bags you just basically got like a free bag right worth of revenue for if you're the m&m company right and that hope that made that probably no one noticed exactly and and so that's that's exactly what it what it comes down to is like how much can we scale back before it will be a problem and so the thinking would be like okay so if, if there used to be 40 and then there was 39 like you probably wouldn't notice at 39 if there were 38 you probably wouldn't notice at 38 if there's 37 you know like maybe you're getting on the cusp 36 like people are starting to notice they're like there are fewer in here and i'm like i'm picking up on it at this point in time it's like you have crossed the threshold of the just noticeable difference right so it's it's like it's literally you're talking about one m and m but at some point in time one m and m is literally the difference maker right in in this particular situation but then i've also applied this idea to like just a lot of other things which is yeah. sort of like the uh, I don't know if you've ever had this happen to you before, but like you're waiting on someone to like meet you somewhere and you're, and you're sitting and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting and finally like, I'm, I'm just going to give them a call and see if they're still on their way. And the second you pull out your phone to call them or like hit send on it, they pull around the corner and they're, and they show up and it's like, they were late by like, it wasn't like at one minute late, you were like, I need to check in on where they are. And it wasn't at two minutes and it wasn't at like 10 minutes, but like at 12, you were like, I'm, I'm calling. Like we've reached that point. Right. But it's, but it's also <laughs> like, it's this like intangible point of like the intangible tipping point. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. It's yes. Um, so anyway, that's, that's the, that's the just noticeable difference. That's the just noticeable I forgot, difference. I forgot how we got to the just noticeable difference in today's discussion. That is a good question i'm speaking slowly so i can think about it love it i don't remember either how we got to the, was it off the corny joke are we back i don't know are we we can be <laughs> we can be corny joke continued corny joke continued okay guys here it is my friend <clears throat> entered 10 pun contests thinking the numbers would help his chance to win but no pun in 10 did Oh, you get it. You I get, get it. it. No I pun get intended. No pun intended. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Oh man. Wow. Just puns about puns. Puns about puns. There's nothing better than puns, really. Puns are like the most polarizing thing in the world, but in a way that I actually have no idea how to comprehend it. Like, it's everybody both loves and hates puns in a way that like really uh, lands them almost in exactly the same spot i do yeah you you were yeah i think you've touched on something because i do not yeah i don't understand this either some people like when you tell <clears throat> dad jokes or i guess dad jokes are normally just puns right like that's sort of the i, the I think shtick. i don't even know if it's just puns i think that a lot of dad jokes are just kind of like maybe a lot of the stuff that we would tell in these episodes yeah where they're they're like they're not very good jokes they're very simple jokes yeah well i think i think that's what makes them dad jokes is that they're often play on words or puns and it's the the reason it's called a dad joke is because it makes your kids laugh and it's like when you say like the only time people are laughing at that joke is if it's the first joke they've ever heard oh sure, and it's sure, like sure. and that's sort of the level dad jokes are and it's like yes because those are literally some of the first jokes you ever hear yes when you're a kid and it's like it's like you understanding enough about words to comprehend that 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 joke had a double meaning and that's what made it funny right okay and like i think that's like one of the simplest ways to enjoy it so i think the reason maybe people don't like puns is because it's like it's like still being into blues clues or something 
Oh, I know? see. <laughs> like, like, yeah, yeah. But the way that he drew pictures was so satisfying. It was so satisfying. Steve, well done. Also, new host. Haven't watched it, but I hear many good things about it. it seems like you're doing a real bang-up job over there. It feels like you're right on the cusp of, of watching Blue's Clues yourself. I, I very well might be. Although, okay, here's something... That has been frustrating. Frustrating Ooh, me recently. Loved the first pronunciation of it. Frustrating. Frustrating. Yeah. Frustrating. Yeah. It has been frustrating me recently. Is that so? When we were kids, um, you were stuck watching what was ever on, whatever was on TV. Yes. Often this was an enormous pain because uh, what was on TV wasn't very good. Yes. <laughs> or it was Blue's Clues for the third time in a row that day yeah and (laughs) that was the thing too like if you didn't grow up in the 90s you may not remember this but uh or know that this ever happened but in in the early days of nickelodeon they had nick jr and what nick jr was was like the tv that was on until like three o'clock in the afternoon because it was supposed to be like the programming meant for like while people who weren't at school exactly people who weren't at school and so very frequently they were like these very child like target audience shows and they would just show not even like three episodes of Blue's Clues in a row. It was the same three in a row. It was yeah, it was the same episode three times in a row, so that the child could pick up on the repetition. Yes. Yeah. Which I don't know how effective that was, but um, if you're at home stuck watching that, it is real boring. If you're too old for Blue's Clues, okay. anyway. Um, or else maybe you just don't like whatever the show is for your limited child programming. Well, enter the age of streaming, okay. Ben. Absolutely, this is no longer a problem. No. Because guess what? Child can just pick whatever they want. Don't like it? Next. Don't like it? No, like, there's no, like, I don't like this, so I won't watch TV, or I don't like this, but I'll watch it anyway, because otherwise I'm not watching TV, and that's what I want to be doing. This is such a back in my day. <laughs> it is such a back in my day, and I feel so old <laughs> saying it, but it is so frustrating that you can't just be like let me like i wish i could just turn on nickelodeon or like the disney channel and be like here you go watch whatever's on sure um but can't really do that like at this like luke is at a point where if he doesn't if he's not interested in what he's watching he can like ask you to change it and it's not like you just change it oh to the other kids station you just have, you know, he knows you can go out to the menu and that there are 5,000 thumbnails he can look at and choose. Okay. You know, this is not a power we had as kids so, to choose from a library of stuff. Like the internet wasn't available to five-year-old you to choose television. Whatever you wanted to watch. But yeah. I feel like like our parents probably saw us watching Blue's Clues and they're like, well, when we were kids, we didn't have entertaining stuff like this to watch. Yeah. Hard stop. <clears throat> Like, let alone having, like, your own option of it. So, yeah. like, I would be very curious to to see, like, generationally speaking, what which what each of those things would be. Yeah. Like, we should just go and, like, talk to, like, every member of our family and ask them what they did when they were kids. Yes, that would be interesting. But so, I guess the, the problem here that I run into is, like, I don't really mind. Like, it's convenient for sure to be able to, like, let him experiment with tons of different stuff to find stuff he actually likes. Like, sure. Like, that's a plus. But on the flip side, if he gets momentarily bored with something, it's like, you know, you could just abandon it. No problem. And the other thing is, it there is a ton of programming out there that is just clearly mass produced so that it's something that might draw a, like a kid in like Amazon Prime in, per, in particular, like Prime Video yes. has this. There are just so many like included free with prime and it's like i can tell why some of these are free because they're being produced i think by amazon or i don't know <clears throat> that's what it looks like okay but they are just terrible and they are just boring and it's just like i don't i can't even describe it it's just like like a dinosaur like counting stuff or it's just it's very low budget and it's like i hate this and it's like i don't care if you want to choose to watch stuff but if you could watch things that were good. <laughs> I can tell you 100% of that dad hated like when we were watching like SpongeBob as a kid. Like he he found he found it to not be funny in any way shape or form. Look, it, the like, fact that dad has no sense of humor about SpongeBob <laughs> Which is a fantastic show. Listen, Jay, I wish Luke would watch SpongeBob. Jay, listen, it sounds to me like you're just not understanding the true art form that is opening individual eggs and seeing what's inside for hours on end. 
I, that sounds like you're talking about like YouTube. It is like YouTube. That's the more yes. you, I, the the YouTube side of it's interesting. Uh, yeah, we've dipped into the YouTube side of like kids programming some, where it's yes. like kids playing with toys and stuff. And there are varying levels of execution on it. Where sometimes I'm like, th- these people are just showing. Like I, it sounds weird. The ones I like the most are when the adults are just using the toys in the way that a kid would. <laughs> Okay. Like, there's not... I, I don't know. I don't like watching just another kid play with a toy, but I'm not saying, like, the adult is in the video. It's more like you can just see their hands doing it, and they're just sort of playing out scenes with, like, big toy sets. I see. Yeah. I see. And I, sort of, like, showing I, the kid how to play with the toy. Like, what what level... Like, how far can you take this imagination? If right. You're, if you were really going to, like, yeah. pull it. Yeah. And they'll, like, mix and match stuff, and it's, like, well done. Okay. And that's good. Um, but some sometimes it's, like, you know, parents like playing with their kids and stuff. And that that's good too. Um, but there are some where you're like, I don't know about this. This just seems like, you know, I don't know. I don't know about this. Okay. 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 But, Jay, <laughs> well, I have a question for you. Cause you, okay. have a, you have a note here in the show notes for today. Oh, okay. And yeah. I, I just, I just, I, I don't know if this is related to what we're already talking about or yeah. not. Maybe, maybe it has something to do with Luke. Maybe, maybe I'm just taking a shot in the dark here. <laughs> the exact sentence you wrote was, I don't know what to do with the seashell I have. <laughs> <laughs> and like when I saw it, I was like, we were we were writing our notes for the show, and I was like, I read it out loud, and you just started laughing, and I was like, don't say anything. I don't want to know a single detail about this particular story. But like, t- tell me everything there is to know about the dilemma you're having with your <laughs> seashell. <laughs> seashell. Okay, so there's this seashell I have, and I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> so far, with yeah, you one yawn, hundo, you on board, and. <laughs> Uh, so I, I was this past weekend, I was trying to think, uh, I, like I picked it up for about the 50th time and I was like, I don't know what to do with this thing. And I was like, should I put this in the show notes for popcorn culture? And I was like, I don't know. It's, it seems such a, like a small dilemma, but, and then I was like, I thought about it as I was doing the notes. I was like, I'm putting it in here. We'll just see where it goes anyway. So. We have this seashell. It's a conch shell. Okay. Okay. And you right. don't know what to do with it. It's a conch shell. I'm on. I'm on. I don't know what to the do with it. The people at home are like, get to <laughs> it. Like, we get it. <laughs> You're unsure. <laughs> so, but if you are at the beach, yeah, and you are out walking along the beach, it you may as well have found buried treasure if you find a full intact conch shell. Right. Abs- yes. Yeah. Hun- it is. Yes. Yeah. It is, that is like that is. There is nothing greater that can happen at the beach. Yeah. There is, it is, it is like winning the lottery. Not only has this shell survived the waves crashing it into the beach, but you were then also the first person to find it. Yes. Because there's no chance anyone walks past a conch shell and doesn't pick it, pick it up for themselves. They're not like, that's nice. And you know, you take it. In the history of humans, there has never been a single instance where one of us has seen a conch shell and not taking it with them. It's sort of a weird thing about like it, that that to, in itself I think is pretty unique. Like there's not other things where you're just walking around and you can just be like this is mine now right. and like you want it. It's true. Like even even if you see like really beautiful like wildflowers or something uh, well, I mean, typically there's a sign that specifically says don't take these, but yeah. also it's, I, I don't even feel like I've had the impulse to, maybe those signs are just super effective, but like, you know, I never see like a really beautiful flower out in nature. I'm like, I'm going to has me that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but seashells are like this, like free, cool thing. You can just take, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. this is just mine now. Right, right, right. I, this is mine. This is mine. I have it. I has it. The ocean chose me. The ocean chose me. I will have this conch shell. I will bring it back and it will. And the thing is, I find myself to be extremely particular about it. Like, if I found a conch shell on the beach that was like 98% perfect, I would be like garbage. Not like, good enough. Like if you, yeah, like that's the thing. You pick it up and it's like, this is so good. Oh, it's missing a big chunk right here. Forget it. I don't even want it. It's not even worth bringing it home and right. wondering what to do with it. Exactly. So anyway, uh, we have a conch shell though at the house, which was found. It's pretty great. It's like 100, uh, 100%, I would say, worth keeping Okay. from the beach. This is excellent. So, Here's the the flip side about seashells is all of the glory of finding it 
exists only while you're at the beach. True. Once you come home, what do you do with that seashell? <laughs> you don't like. Were you gonna put it on display? <laughs> you just just well, look what I look what I found. <laughs> you didn't take it. It doesn't take a skill to find it. And I will tell you that may, maybe you do. Maybe you put your seashells on display, and that's totally fine. Good for you. This is not a di- for display seashell. Like this was a seashell that we found and we gave to Luke. It's a toy, basically, is what it is. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. Which, if you think about conch shells, are only so-so toys because basically they're just big spiky rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Semi-fragile big spiky rocks. Exactly. Yeah. Like I know they're not rocks. The calm down comments, but it's a. Ba- that's what you got. You got a big spiky circular thing. Okay. Yeah. That. You know, it looks nice and it's like a miracle of nature and it was free treasure and it sounds like the ocean, which is where it came from, which is one of the coolest things ever. But it is also this like pointy thing and it is effectively a toy. Like we don't have a place to put it on display. I'm not trying to display it. It's just it goes in the toy box and every now and then it'll fall out and it'll be on the ground. And now I'm like, it's not like, you know, Luke doesn't, he doesn't really play with it. It's just, it's just this hard spiky thing that's in the toy box now so, and I'm like it is threatening to break at all times and i'm like should i just throw it out but then i'm also like but the ocean chose me it did it <laughs> exactly. did the ocean did choose what do you? i do with the seashell <laughs> i i think you return the heart of tafiti is what you do you want me to bring the seashell with me <laughs> to the beach <laughs> to the beach yes <laughs> that Okay, I need to ask you. You're gonna be a chore. Okay, so <laughs> as you back out and start to like look at this, there there is a, the question to examine to me is like, what what is it about the fact that we're all drawn to these things? And you're you're absolutely right. Like if you find one, it is like like you can't wait to you can't wait to get back and show people. You're absolutely keeping it. You're definitely bringing it home. But there is there is always that that grand conclusion of. But it there is nothing that I can do with it. And if you go to the beach like annually, there's there's also sort of like this thing where over time you you have probably been chosen by the ocean more than once. Possibly. You know, so like at some point in time, it's almost even like uh, we're starting to have too many of these. Got too many. I got this whole collection of. Like, I understand I'm incredibly special <laughs> to the planet, but like, come on, guys. Come on, ocean. Right, right, right. So, <laughs> that, what, yeah, what, what is, what is happening in our brains that we see it, we have to have it, and then have absolutely nothing to do with it? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, has this always been the case, do you think? Like, do you think that forever people have picked up seashells, or do you think at some point in time they were like, those are just there. They're only useful to us if the conch is still alive inside of it so that we can make conch fritters. Conch fritters. That's the thing. That's I think when thing. I found out that snails lived inside of, not snail, yeah, snails uh, lived inside of conchs, yeah. I, like my mind was kind of blown a little bit yeah. because for such a beautiful thing to have been made by a snail. Yeah, it's like, like, what? It's like, that doesn't seem right. I guess, I mean, even if you pick up like a land snail, I guess it's got like a pretty cool... Uh, spiral Fibonacci sequence shell going on there. Look at you dropping terms. Yeah, look at that. I know about things. You do. Golden ratio. Of course. Woo. Well done. Well yeah. done. Anyway, I don't know. So that that's our question. We'll just have to put it out to the universe. What do you do with your seashells? What should I do? Should I throw <laughs> the seashell away? I don't think you should throw it away. I don't think you should no. throw it away. Okay. It feels like that's not the answer, and I feel pretty confident in the, in the fact that that's not the answer. Right, that would okay. Okay. So that's good to know. Moving on from there. Uh, the other possible option would just be that you get a very large aquarium and put it inside of the aquarium. That seems like another chore. It, well, you know, you, you, the ocean chose you <laughs> <laughs> to do the chore. To do this, the chore. Every single time. Why don't you put it back in water? Every <laughs> Because that's where it's supposed to go. It's not like alive anymore. Well, I don't know. This is This goes back. When we were kids, we had a yellow lab named Torch. And I remember that. I remember mom telling me that Torch liked it best when I gave him a bath. She was like, she was like, no, like Torch likes it. Like you're like, you're the person who gives mm-hmm. Torch the bath and he yeah. like appreciates when you like, you're the best at it. Yeah. And I, I remember being like, glowing with pride. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was like, that's right. That's right. I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm awesome at this. Don't worry, mom. I won't even tell the other guys that Torch <laughs> likes me best. Oh boy. And so I was like, yes, I'm on board. I will go in the bathtub with Torch. I will give him a bath. He will be spotless. <laughs> Look at you getting conned by mom. <laughs> I, I 
know, I know. But yeah, so anyway, that's what I think happened is that's the ocean is attempting to get is to get you to do a chore for it. But what the why yeah, in no, the analogy what's the chore? in the analogy, you are me and and the, ocean, the, and the ocean is mom. And I am the best at putting a seashell back in the water. <laughs> the absolute best. Why would the ocean even throw it out of the water then? To test you. <laughs> Maybe you'll get magic powers. Oh, sea, I put it in sea the ba- water. Sea base powers. Sea, sea powers. <clears throat> you get the power of the conch. Yeah. <laughs> which is to, not to be argued with, apparently. Yeah, not to be argued with. Yeah. yeah, yeah you, don't wanna, you don't want to face I will a sound conch. like the ocean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stand near me, and it will sound like waves crashing. People will be like, "Is it the ocean?" It's like, "Nah, it's just me." Like, we're at the beach. Like, surprise! (laughs) It's just me. That's a really good element of surprise. (laughs) Nobody expects you to sound like the literal ocean. (laughs) What a what a lame superpower. What what do you do? I well, (laughs) close your eyes. (laughs) Where does it sound like you are? This is so remarkably useless. Oh my god. Okay, we have to get away from this conversation because we will live here forever. Um, okay, <clears throat> chores. We were talking about chores. This feels like uh, tangent territory. Mm, go for it. Okay, so th- there is a chore that I have always, I've even talked about on the pop hundreds of times, that I've always loved doing, which is like taking care of my yard, right? Yeah. And th- th- like... It has always been one of those things that are, it would never have been on my radar to like hire. Are you still laughing? <laughs> are we still? I'm still. <laughs> I'm trying to get your advice over here. <laughs> Such a dumb power. <laughs> oh my god. My cheeks hurt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you, have, you have literal tears. <laughs> I do. If you can watch, I have tears in my eyes. I'm laughing about the, the conch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm so fine. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it. Okay. We're good. Are we back? Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing I can talk about now is going to be anywhere nearly as good. This is a great time to use our fun transition. <laughs> Tra- I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like we, we, we made a transition noise. Hey, it just yeah. happened. Look at that. Okay, cool. New topic. Okay, so there is a, there is a chore that I that I have always done, which is taking care of my yard. And it's like something that like I I think I get like an enormous amount of like sort of peace from where like I can, I can mm-hmm. go out there. I can sort of like put my headphones in. I'm like listening to whatever I'm listening to uh, lately, the name of the wind. And the name of the wind. it's, um, I just check out like, and I feel like it's something very productive that like I know how to do. And like when I step back, there is the very visible result in front of me. And like, yeah. that's, that's a very like rewarding thing. But this year I had a fence put in, because I, I like live on like a corner, which means I don't have a backyard, which means if the dogs are outside, they had to be like on leash. So I solved that by installing a fence around the entire perimeter of my home. Okay. So the problem is now that the grass grows underneath the fence. And it is this like thing that I'm, I'm like, I need it to be someone else's problem to figure out how to cut around this fence. Because you, like... What do you mean it grows underneath the fence? Okay, so like the fence, the fence goes across like the yard. It's in the grass, right? Yeah. And underneath the fence is like grass itself, yeah. which means that like I can take like my weed eater along the line and like, you know, cut most of it, but like directly underneath the fence itself, there's still grass that like I can't get to. And it is like very visibly like not cut. Like being smushed by the fence? It's not really being smushed, it's just growing around it. So it's just like, and you can't get it with the weed eater. Not really, no. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. And so this is like the the first time in my life where I'm like, can I can I hire someone to do this thing? Like, here's okay. <clears throat> I think I know what to do, Ben. I think I actually have a lawn solution for you. No kidding. Because as it were, um, I'm not one. I don't I, I don't mind doing yard work, but um, at my present stage in life, my yard work would take up so much of my weekend 
as to be unrealistic given the number of children I have. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, this weekend was consulting with a landscaper who might come just clean up my yard in a make it look presentable kind of way. I got you. And he was telling me that one of the things he would recommend is like doing some edging between the mulch bed and the grass so that they don't, uh, you know, invade each other's space. Okay. You know, that there's no war between the, the, the grass and the mulch. And it's like, you can even see here, your grass starting to grow through into the mulch. Into the mulch. Yeah. Don't no good. Don't Gotta want. have those good clean lines. Gotta have good clean lines. Exactly. Yeah. So here I think is what you probably need to do is along the entire perimeter of your fence, have a nice little clean cut mulch line. Wow, that seems like it would take. And it, yeah, well, it might take, but good news. Good, I have great news for you, Ben. Yeah. This is the sort of thing you like to do. So, so the good news great is, is, is you get some more, you got more work to do. So, you're giving me a chore. Uh, well, you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> now I see how it feels. <laughs> exactly. Okay. 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 Interesting. Which, if, if anybody out there has never like discovered like lawn TikTok, I highly recommend. F- f- like stumbling into that arena. Yeah, lawn talk. Lawn talk. Because yeah. there is some super satisfying stuff happening over there where people have done exactly what you're talking about. When yeah. you run the weed eater right along that line, it's like... Whoosh, Maybe no. even if you just edged the very, like, the line, the fence itself. Maybe you don't need to mulch. Maybe you just edge the fence and that'll just, like, create a barrier between the, like, the the grass and the fence. Okay. Okay. I feel like that could work. You know what was going to be not satisfying just what, now? What's that? I I don't know if people have noticed. Um, hopefully people listening haven't noticed. But I've been reaching over and grabbing my drink to drink. Yeah. And I almost just reached and grabbed this candle to take a sip. Oh. Which would have been just the worst sip of anything I think I'd ever taken. Yeah, you're not a fan of soy wax. I wasn't gonna. I didn't want to drink the soy wax uh, plus the fire. I feel like would hurt. <laughs> it seems like it. It yeah. seems like it. I was just very. Oh my, I could just like. Whoop, no, I could see it. Whoop. I could see it. Yeah, it feels like a very yeah. natural thing to it do. Would have been no good. Yeah, you got to be careful about where you keep candles relative to where you keep drinks. Yeah, you don't want to sip your candle. This is a known problem when yeah. it comes to candles. Right. Although I will say, what you do <laughs> want to do with this candle is head over to CarlinBrothersCoffee.com and uh, scope them out because these are our brand new labeled candles. This one's called Broomstick Candle and it smells amazing. It does actually smell amazing. It's yeah. by far and away my it's my favorite scent. We have all three, but this was, yeah, we, we have fancy new redesigned candle labels with like everything that I've done recently with like a foil Sort Gotta of have that foil. The foil effect. Yeah. So all of like the all of like the logos themselves. Do you like, like my tran- my segue my segue into candles? <clears throat> I thought it was really good. I thought it was yeah. really good. I think that people were like, man, you guys are talking about lawns for way too long, and yeah. then they were like, oh, thank goodness we're back on candles. This is good. This is this known is, territory. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I feel. Yeah. Th- there was there was the the conk talk, the lawn talk. <laughs> the conk talk was solid. Ben, it, okay. Yeah, good. Good quality. <laughs> top tier. That's good podcasting. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yep. So yeah, if you guys want to check these out, there now available uh we will uh, actually as of today is the first day that these these new candles yeah new new relaunching the candles with the shiny new labels on them they're super also also if you don't know about the candles we have three flavors as a way of broomstick candle phoenix fire and lemon sherbet and they all have a surprise inside they do yeah. they do this is yeah this was like i remember when we were we were talking to like our, our people about this particular idea and i was like i want to put something inside of the candles so that like when it melts down there's like a special surprise in there and i think that they were all like uh what we, um <clears throat> you want to put something in the candle put it in the candle. i, I want to put something in the candle so yeah there's a lot of like really really cool charms in there yeah to be found uh and we also have like a like collect them all uh sort of key ring yeah. that can go with it as well uh all of that is available over at carlinbrotherscoffee.com carlinbrotherscoffee.com get your candle there's magical charms inside exactly They're it's fun. a it's a hooting and hollering good time it makes is it, makes a great gift it does yes. okay ben last week you revealed that you found a tr- secret treasure key, key secret treasure key a secret treasure key yes. in your wall in my wall okay update me on your uh treasure hunting have you have you located the box it goes to or anything no not yet unfortunately uh this is i, I to be honest with you it's like i'm so excited about it and i genuinely don't really know where to start with it mm. it's like i feel like there needs to be something done right you like, got to like okay so 
Ethan, the editor, bingo, um, suggested, or he, he seemed to like think it must go to a piece of furniture. It feels, that does feel very likely. Yeah. Like that you would have like a, like an armoire or something like that, that, that you, you conceivably could lock for some reason. I guess I'm not really totally sure why you would lock it. I don't know. My thought was like, I guess, I mean, some desks lock and a lot of like trunks lock. Ooh, a, a trunk would a be trunk just trunk as good. A trunk would be great because that's basically a treasure chest then. I, as far as I'm concerned, just in case anybody's keeping score at home, I would be just as fine with finding a hidden trunk as I would treasure chest. Well, the, I would I would just say it's the exact same thing either way. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I mean, sure. what okay. is a chest but a trunk? Hmm, that's a good point. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, not for elephants and the very different parts of the body, but... hey Oh, Oh, now that was a dad joke. Nice, nice, anyway. nice, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so here, though, what, upon further examination of your key, it did not look like it was, like, some specifically fancy, like, Swedish, you know, uh, sweet, what, what, what word am I thinking? Swiss bank account lockbox sort of key. Oh, okay. It looked like, like it came with... What if it if it's still a piece of furniture? I bet that furniture was I don't I don't want to say mass produced, but produced more than one of. I bet the key w- could have opened many things. Oh yes, I, I, you know based what I mean? on based on the yes the teeth of the key, which which seem not quite specific enough to really truly be something like remarkable. Right. Yeah. So I, I do agree with that. And it's actually, it's, it's a question I've had about most skeleton keys for most of my life. Cause I've spent a lot of time dwelling on this particular topic, Exactly. which is that like most of them seem like they look at least reasonably similar. Yeah. You know, it's like they got like the two teeth <clears throat> and it's like, okay, that's it. So it seems to me, SpongeBob teeth. That's what I'm going to call it. SpongeBob teeth. Like, yeah. Yeah. The big space. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The tooth gap. Right. Yeah. Um, so I think you could probably like, if you went, antiquing here in the Roanoke area and just brought your key with you and looked for like keyholes <laughs> at antique shops, it seems conceivable that you would eventually find a match. The, okay. I see what you're saying here. Right. Like, so it's like, like I, I could like go and like walk around these antique shops with my key in pocket and just be like, right. Like, just like, like not this one. Not this one, but I'm trying, I'm trying. Things. Yeah. A quest. A quest. So you're giving me a chore. No, 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 Ben. A treasure hunt. A t- ooh. Yeah. That spin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, even better. So, do, I, I mean, not not to uh, not to burst any balloons or anything, but does it not seem like if there was treasure in the antique shop inside of whatever particular chest uh, that which many different keys could open, that the antique shop owners would have already found the treasure inside? Well, 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 it is likely they didn't just like put the loaded locked chest out on the floor yes. and say, well, take it or leave it. Who knows what's in here? They probably opened it. But I think even if you found a lock in which the key worked, that would feel pretty amazing in its own right. It is true. Like to get to turn it and have it like activate a mechanism yeah. you know like and have like pin top <clears throat> open or something right that would be that would be like a good consolation prize if not literal <clears throat> bars of gold right which are which feels likely it, i mean yes yeah it's like yeah. It, it really what we're, do, we're we're doing is get proof of concept that it will in fact open a lock yeah period maybe not the the lock uh and maybe even many different locks maybe because that's that's what i feel like is that if you have one of these keys and it just goes to like a trunk in your house or something, then the key is really just so that you can lock it from other people in your house. Yeah. You know, you're not expecting it's okay if there's a lot of versions of this key because it's unlikely people are walking around with the exact same chest. Well, so here's the question though, is that like, I agree with you, but the the question to me is why is it inside of the wall? Like, right? This is ooh, yes. This is such a specific space for it to be that it it feels like the furniture wouldn't have been inside of the house yet because the house would still be being built. Is it? Was it hanging on a wall when they found it? It was. It was hanging. It was hanging. Interesting. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, like, maybe this is a floorboard situation. Oh, maybe That's, there's like a there's like a key floorboard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, there's. Are the, there any missing parts of your basement? Hmm. I'll have to look. Which you need to look above. Right. 
Yes. Yeah. That's that's what that's probably the thing to do. If you find a keyhole in your house somewhere, I'm my mind is going to be so blown. Uh, Jay, I will tell you that my mind will be blown. I, I will be, be like I'm, it's going to be like the best thing that ever happened to me to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's like this is like, there's there is no greater accomplishment. And this is like what I said before. I said it last week and I meant it. Like if I if, if I found an actual treasure chest, like my life would be complete. I would <laughs> I would it. like Santa doesn't even need to come anymore. <laughs> I'm set. <laughs> Although Santa, if you are listening, I will take a treasure chest. There you go. Yes. Then you can stop. Like you can knock that one off the list. Forever. Right, right. Yeah. It's like it's what you're really doing is like you're saving in the long run. It's a little extra work up front, but like yeah. over time, you don't have to keep coming back every year, and you'll save on the calories because I make really good cookies, and right. you want to eat those cookies. Exactly. So you know, it's all. I mean, if you're if you're asking me, Santa, this is working out well for you. Which is what I'm happy for. I'm, right. I'm helping Santa. Is it worth considering? I uh, like if if the potential for, would this would this deal hold up if like you had children later on or something? Would Santa still then be skip and be like, well, I already have a deal with that guy, so this kid, those kids, out. Oh wait a second. So my 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 unborn children now are having to pay the price of of no Christmas. Right, exactly. Because I found a treasure chest. Yeah. Hmm, this is a really good question. Well, on the, I mean, flip side, they could just play with the treasure. They could just play with the treasure because, of course, I wouldn't sell the treasure. I would use it as, as in the same that way you might... the toy. In the same way you might have a shell in your house. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. it's like, this is now... It's not really a toy, but it's also not really anything else. I'm not going to put it on display. Right. So I'll just put it in the toy box. This is always the... Del- <laughs> just, this is, these are my toys. Be like, what is... Are those gold bars? Yeah. <laughs> like... Yeah, <laughs> like just pick it up. Like you can just you can hold that for hours and feel great. Right. Like I have. I'm just sitting here and hold it, man. This woo, the best. It's the amazing. Best. This is the problem I think so many people have with like uh like trading cards or I'll just say Pokemon cards. Okay. Since it's, you should you know, go out on a limb. <laughs> go out on a limb and say Pokemon cards. <clears throat> is that? There's always this talk of like you you know you want to want to want to pull the rarest one want to own the most the most valuable one like because it like it feels good to have the valuable thing yeah but then like do you sell it would you would you rather like have your cake or eat it you know that it really is the question it is isn't the question it? it's, it's like. like yeah. Right. And I don't I don't even know what the answer to this question is because so we we just recently bought. Um, like 10 booster boxes that we, we unboxed over on our gaming channel one yeah. day. And that, that was like going through in the back of my mind the entire time. Like was it, it's similar to buying like the, the scratcher lottery tickets. Yeah. You know, it's like if you were to go and buy a thousand dollars worth of scratcher lottery tickets, yeah. then you would, you would have winning tickets. Like you would, you would probably even win like $50 on some tickets, a hundred dollars on some tickets. Right. But for the most part, you would win like $1 or $2 for, for the most part, you'd be earning $0. Exactly. And, and it, even if you would spend a thousand dollars, the most likely scenario is that you will end up like returning like $600 because that is how the lottery works. So you, you would have winning tickets, which would be like individually exciting if you had just bought one for a dollar and right. you got $50, but it doesn't really work in like a scalability thing, which is as a kid you never could have explained to me that was something where i was like it, it was the same thing as like how physics works where i was right. like why don't we just point fans at other fans that produce wind energy you just and, get a circle of fans uh, yeah. perpetual motion uh, yeah like i think as like an 11 year old i was like guys i solved our energy crisis like this is fine we'll just right. point we'll point fans at other fans and collect the energy and, and we're just duplicating it's gonna be awesome there you go uh um, no problem at all unfortunately that's not how it works so anyway we're <laughs> we're, we're opening some up. people are like i'm writing that down <laughs> right yeah no wait I'm, a minute yeah, I'm awesome yeah um no so as we're opening up all these pokemon cards though i'm having like and this is sort of like my business mind at work was i'm like okay i know that we're finding some like particularly rare cards but like the numbers were in our favor like we had 360 booster packs yeah in one day we bought more cards than our childhood like a an entire era of our childhood we didn't buy so many cards right and we did it in one day. Yeah. And so like, which for one was like mind boggling to me because it was like, you know, this was a big thing for like, you know, multiple birthdays and Christmas and stuff. Like that's like if our family members were asking like, you know, what do you want? It's like Pokemon cards. And we as individuals and maybe even as a family, 
never accumulated a total of 360 packs. I, I oh. wouldn't say so. Yeah. Even I would say even me who competitively played like Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Yes. And like was at a level where I was like, you know, winning some local card shop tournaments. Right. Did not own this many Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So all that to say though, that like of course we were gonna pull rare stuff in the same way that with the scratcher ticket analogy, you you are gonna have some where it's like this was a hundred dollar ticket. Like this one one dollar ticket was worth a hundred dollars, and it's like, wow, what good value? Except for the fact that in the scheme of things, you don't make the money back. So what I was so determined to do as we were like unboxing these things was like, man, what I what I really want is like to be able to start like an eBay store and like basically ultimately like make a profit on them. Right. But then like as I'm looking at all of them, and it's like, well, I wouldn't want to part with that one because it was particularly cool. We were really excited about this one. And like you might actually use that one in gameplay. And it was kind of like all of the things that were actually rare and worth anything. I was like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to like get rid of that. We have it. We have, right. We have it. Why would we get rid of it? Right. Like a seashell. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Everything is a seashell. If it, when it really comes down to it, yeah. it is. Okay. I would say we also, as a matter of fact, I think we did pull the rarest card you could Look at us from go. the pack. Okay, which was what? Which was which was the uh, Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX Alternate Art Secret. Mm, okay. Yeah. Does this count as Jay gets too technical about Pokemon? I don't I don't think so. I mean, I'm just, uh, this is what it's called. I'm counting it. You're counting it? Okay. That one, at least I'm looking it up right now. I wasn't just like searching my phone while Ben was talking. Mm -hmm. um, is it going on TCG Player? For one hundred and forty-five dollars. Wowzers! Yeah. See what, what what great value. What great value. Although, yeah. if you see, it, you're right. It'd be a tremendous if you bought a single booster pack at the store for four dollars and pulled that. And we're like, I'm just going to turn around and right and, <laughs> make an easy profit. And I think in that particular scenario, that's where like th there could be an argument to be made where it's like, okay, I could go back and buy another, you know. 25 packs or whatever with that money so it would be worth just being like boom <laughs> like i'll i will sell this one in order to get more which would mean i'll have more other cars that maybe aren't as good as this one but there will there will be like better other ones i guess right. mm -hmm. and yeah i don't know this is it's such a it's a, it feels like a total conundrum to me it does feel like a bit of a conundrum which is how I was feeling segue. Wow. Here we go. Okay. When also related to Pokemon cards, there is this, there's this thing. The online version of the game has been doing Ben. Okay. Called the player's cup. Oh, <gasps> wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So they're coming up on player's cup four. Okay. Which the hmm? like the fourth annual. Nope. Nope. I don't think it's annual. I think it's like several times a year. They're doing it. Okay. This is just the fourth one. And I think it's, I would guess it's like as a result of COVID and like, Oh, we can't have as many, in-person in person. tournaments let's just go straight online and so i and i was people um were asking me last week i was streaming some pokemon cards and they're like are you going to play in the player's cup and i was like i don't like i've i've heard those words i've been around the game enough to like hear like to like okay i've heard of the player's cup okay but even just the fact that it's like called that makes it sound like you have to be like invited do you like how do you how do you play how do you do it you beat your rival and the elite four that's right <laughs> yeah and then you become the champion, except the next time you go talk to the Elite Four, where someone else is still the champion. I don't know what's going on in those Pokemon games, Ben. We can we can come back to that. We can I come have back to that. Myself. Okay, okay, we'll come back to that. But so this is my like, this is my frustration is that figuring it out was not easy because I, I think I'm gonna try and play in the Players Cup, Ben. Okay, you're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. I'll keep you posted as you're to my progress. You're gonna be the very best. That'd be really surprising. That no one <laughs> ever won. Best best song ever best like for like like an oh. opening intro is the pokemon song it's pretty good it's up there with the mighty Morphin power rangers that was also really good okay yeah i would say it's a, i would say it's you, a scooch better you'd but. say it's a sco okay let's say hey, opinions that's yeah. cool yeah it's fine strong opinions about weak things that's yeah. good right bingo um but so but like i'm going to like look up just how to do it and it's like this is a tournament for master class players and i'm like oh master class okay oh man that sounds like how do I get master? Like, what do I need to do to be master class? Is that like the black belt of Pokemon? I parts? know. That's what I'm like. Do like, is there a point system behind the scenes? Cause I'm clicking through my profile. There's somewhere where it says like points and it says like 900 something. I'm like, I don't even know. I don't know if that's good. Is that like master class level? Is that like, Hey, you've played a few games. Yeah. You got 900 points. Big deal. Big whoop, big right. whoop friend. Big whoop. Yeah. No. 
uh, and like this, like I spent a while, like, what does that mean? Like, how do I, and all it means, is it's just an age division. It's basically like, if you're over 18, you're in the master class. Oh, it was like, dear. oh, so annoying. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. And then it's like a matter of connecting your like player's account with your, uh, card game account, which seems like it, they should be connected to begin with. Feels that way. But you have to go like flip a bunch of switches on some like less unknown players club website. And even now, like I don't understand why in the game there's not just like a sign up for the players club here. Right. Like why can't why isn't there a button in the game to sign up for it? So you signed up, but you're not sure if you signed up. Ex- this is yes, exactly. Like I want to play. I am it's free to enter. But there's not like, I just want like a button that's, or like something where it's like, you're good. Confirmation. So yeah. So now, I mean, now you've got like the, the big question of like, do we shoot an actual training montage or not? Because like, we need to know, Mm. we need to know like what, what bits of the narrative should we be like capturing for what is the word? Prosperity. Prosperity. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, maybe someone yeah. can correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, I mean, this is the I mean, this is a big deal, you know. Like, you could be on your quest to being the very best. We'll see. This is this is be my first foray into like a legit Pokemon trading card game competition, I do, suppose. Do Do you think like that? Is this something like where you could see yourself like stepping into that like arena of? of true blue competitive play. Oh, I, I, I certainly think about, this is something that I think about all the time. Like I very badly would love to be like in person playing like card tournaments. Okay. That sounds very fun. Cause you can like travel and stuff and do it too, to like go to different places. But it seems even if it was just like a local card shop, that sounds fantastic. Sounds for super so, fun. For some reason I'm imagining you like in Dubai, in Dubai. Like, that's like where I, that's where I, like I imagine like the, the big tournament is. I'm imagining probably mostly North American play. Okay. I'm um, thinking Dubai, but whatever. Okay. You know, I would be happy to, that sounds very fun. I'm imagining international play largely takes place in like Japan. Can I be your but manager? But I don't know. You can totally, yeah, absolutely. You slash, know? slash coach. Yeah. I, uh, I would how be like, are you, you're going to coach me. <laughs> precisely. Okay. See, I will be like, this is just it, it's like one of my favorite shows of all time, Ted Lasso. It's like, he doesn't know that much about the, the game of like, you know, European football. What he knows a lot about is is like attitudes, you know, positive yeah, attitudes, right? And like how to harness that and use it to like become the very best that yeah, there ever was. Exactly. That no one ever was. I want to be the very best, like no one ever was. Okay, got it. Yeah, right. like no one ever was. So that's that's like what I'll do. I'll be like your like your your hype man. Okay. Leader. Right. Your younger brother who looks older. Uh huh. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's I'll it. be all of those things. We'll be all over it. We'll have a lucky seashell. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we'll do with the seashell. <laughs> we figured it out. Yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna play cards later. I'm gonna put the seashell on the table, and I'm just gonna be like, "We got this. We got this. We got this." It's like a pet rock. It's like a but pet, it's a pet seashell. Yeah, but it's a good luck charm for Pokemon cards. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Because the ocean chose you. Yeah. Apparently, how it works though is that if if I have signed up appropriately, which I don't know, because there's not a button where you can just be like, "I'd like to play." Okay. Maybe. Then apparent, I think on April 26th is when it starts. You just log into your account and there will be like 50 event tickets. And each ticket lets you play in like a three-round tournament. And how you place in that gives you points. And But there's 50 of them. So it's at least 150 games if you use all of them. Wow. And yeah. So, okay. T- tell me more about this uh, Queen's Gambit style. If you win this, where do you go? Oh, so yeah, right. It, I, depending on where you land points wise, there is like a, um, like a, I guess like a regional. Oh, I love it. Right? I love you it. Gotta make it to regionals. Gotta make it to regionals. We gotta make it to regionals, y'all. <laughs> this is the best thing ever. <laughs> this is gonna be so much fun. All right. Well, I'll keep you up to date on my progress as I hopefully this. I, I want confirmation that I'm in though, because if it gets to April 26th that it starts and I'm not in, then it's gonna be like, well, I tried. I tried. I don't, like, I don't know what I did wrong. You're going to have to wait till next season. I know. I'm going to have to wait until Players Cup 5 to get in on the action. Oh, man. We can't have that. We I know. can't have that. It's... Maybe you should call a 1 800 number. Ooh, that, you know, I want, I do wonder. Maybe yeah. that's not a bad idea. Well, Can thank I? you. Customer support. Thanks, coach. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> that is what I am here for. Just to help. Just to, just to be an aid at all times. Yeah. So I'm excited about this. And okay. I mean, I feel like we should start a whole new series that is the, one of the Super Carlin brothers attempts to become a professional card player. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. And we just, we just like, we follow that journey. I think we drop everything else that we're doing and, mm-hmm. and really just put all of our eggs into that 
pro Pokemon cup. Get right into the pro Pokemon card circuit. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like you'll like you'll be going and like you know giving talks about right. strategy. We'll understand the meta game like crazy. Oh yeah, exactly. I was gonna say the same thing. I mm-hmm. totally know what that means. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Speaking of games that I don't understand, let me tell you a little, uh, a short little anecdote mm-hmm. uh, about a game that I don't currently understand, which okay. is um, one that I've been playing for many tens of hours, which is Breath of the Wild. Great game. Yeah. So I've been playing, and my my big dilemma for a long time has been that I haven't wanted to finish the game because I have so enjoyed playing it um i actually wish that i had found it earlier in uh like quarantine because it's like it's really done a great job of like capturing my attention and keeping me like focused on something that i am like excited to get back to on like a semi-daily basis yeah so anyway uh i had like done all of like the 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 main quests that lead up to like the big one so uh because it's such a freeform game it basically at any point in time you can do just about anything it's just how capable you are of doing that is at least somewhat dependent on uh how much you have already completed so i i basically was at the point where i needed to go fight the final boss which i was prolonging because i didn't want to like yeah, I didn't want the magic to be over. So finally, last night, I was like, okay, like I'm, I'm gonna go for it. So like, I'm like working my way through the castle. I, I finally get into like the big boss fight, and I'm like, oh my gosh, huh, crazy! And you beat the big boss, <gasps> and like then you know the, you get like this like short little like mini clip afterwards with like Zelda, and then it rolls credits, and then you go back to the main menu scene. Yeah, and I'm like, well, now what? Now what? Yeah, and so like I, I'm like toggling around, and in the final battle, they give you this like really cool bow, and I was like, whoa, sweet, cool new bow. Right, you have the bow. You have the bow. Yeah. And so like now I'm back on like the main menu screen and like I it's like resume game. And when you the last like resume game is like me still inside of the castle, like about to fight the final boss. And I'm like, wait a second. Do I not get to play the game after having and you don't? This is like apparently a Zelda thing. So it's like it's like the game you end the game, but you never actually get to like go and interact in the game itself. Like in, in where the where in the a boss high is, rule where Ganon is not calamity exactly right yeah yeah so no matter what every time i go back and play the game i will have now technically beaten the boss and i think i have a star next to my name so you but, ha- but you have the bow from the boss you don't have the bow you don't you don't get to keep the bow oh no wow yeah so it's like it was just like one gigantic trip down disappointment street oh beating the game was disappointing yes it was I'm i was like i was like you know what i was doing the right thing by waiting and in fact i almost wish i hadn't even finished it because but it's basically can, the exact same as finishing it but you can, so where is like your completionist brain at then are you going to go try and like do more shrines or are you going to continue to play or are you just like it's time for something new i have no idea i have okay. no idea this is where I, i'm like it's only been a day and my brain hasn't like fully processed i see and and waded through that deep pool of disappointment yet okay um so it'll be very curious it'll be very curious because i think both alice and i she's been like watching me play you know every night and yeah. like, super tuned in and we like it's actually been very surprisingly because neither of us really plays a video game something we've been like doing together which has been really cool um but yeah so now i'm like oh what if we just get like super into video games and this is like me and alice's like activity together that'd be great how fun could that be why not yeah anyway so that's where i'm at i, I beat the game but it doesn't feel like it and that's you know sorry to hear that i just feel like a hollow space inside of my chest mm sorry that's okay well maybe you'll find a new game maybe or you can just continue completionist questing in uh in zelda there you go well speaking of completing things maybe we will now officially come to a close in today's episode okay i just segued right into it wow not not even bad not even bad okay guys thank you so much as always for tuning in to this week's episode of the pop uh there is a variety of different ways that you can reach out and kind of interact with us if you so choose uh the first of which being that you can email me directly at popcornculturepod at gmail.com uh Lots of folks have been sending me fascinating little tidbits about coyotes, uh, as well as corny <laughs> jokes and just other general feedback about the show, which is always super appreciated. Uh, also, leave a review if you can over on like the, anywhere it is listed as a podcast. That super helps us out in a big way. Uh, we're also available over at Reddit on Twitter, um, all over the place. We got all all the places wherever your podcasts are pod. What? Yes, wherever wherever, wherever your, your socials po- are social. Wherever your pods are cast. Wherever your pods are cast is, I believe, the line that we came up with. Also, we're available uh, of, on Patreon, so patreoncom slash popcorn culture. Oh, do you know what a great Star Wars podcast would be called? Oh, be like me. the Escape Pod. Oh, That'd be great, right? that is a good one. That is a good uh, one. That yeah. probably exists. Well, maybe we could look it up. We maybe. can start it. 
Yep. We just uh, go aggressively into Star Wars lore. Star Wars pod. Ready? It'll, it'll go. be great. Yeah. All right, guys. Until next week. Pop, pop. Pop.